Hello, my name's Paul Stockdale from ABCPE, the site where we try and make a VCE physical education as easy as ABC. Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about projectile motion. Um, haven't had a VCAR question on projectile motion over the last two years, so who knows? Maybe this year will be the year. Uh, people don't find it overly difficult, um, but interestingly, when I was putting this together, um, I was able to uh, fill about 10 slides. So here we go. Um, basically, a projectile is any object uh, that is airborne, remembering that humans um, can also be projectiles when they jump. Um, whilst in the air, the only forces uh, that will affect the flight of a projectile are gravity, uh, vertical, and air resistance horizontal, but before um, the object is airborne, we can have a fair say on the flight path. And the way we do that is uh, via the angle, the speed, and the height at which we release the projectile. Um, so these variables will be manipulated depending on what the objective is in the sport. And my good friend uh, here, the basketballer, uh, who probably is trying to get that ball into a hoop, his objective is not to throw the projectile as far as possible. So don't get sucked into thinking that it's always about how far we need to throw the projectile because sometimes it's about accuracy. Let's uh, break it down into each of those factors. So speed of release is most important, obviously, when we're trying to maximize the horizontal distance that a projectile will travel. The faster we can release that generally, the further the projectile will go. So angle of release um, is the angle that the object is projected into the air and will vary completely on what uh, you're trying to achieve and what sport you're playing. A pole vaulter is obviously wanting to project high into the air, so their angle will be quite high, perhaps even close to 90 degrees, whereas a lawn bowls person is uh, is trying to roll the ball on the ground, so their angle is going to be very, very different and closer to, uh, to zero and maybe even negative. Uh, the angle of release is also um, dependent upon the height of release and the height of landing. Uh, in soccer, where the height of release, the ground, is the same as the height of landing, the ground, then generally 45 degrees is the, uh, the best angle. But if that's not the case, um, for example, in shot put, where the height of release is at the shoulder and the landing point is the ground, uh, then the angle should be below 45 degrees. Uh, and an example of where the height of release is lower than landing could be, for example, in golf, uh, maybe hitting a wedge shot out of a bunker and you are going to need to have a higher than 45 degree angle. There's a picture on the next slide that, um, that explains that really well. Um, here we are speaking about heights of release and you can see in the diagram exactly what I was talking about in the last slide. Generally, for any given speed and angle of release, um, a projectile release from a higher vantage point is going to travel further. And the reason for that is it just has a longer flight time. So it's in the air for longer before it hits the ground and stops its horizontal distance. Oh, volleyball is a great example uh, where players will manipulate the angles, the heights and the speeds all of the time. The picture here shows a volleyball launching themselves, once again, a projectile into the air so they can get high above the net Therefore, they can hit the ball down at a low angle of release and hit it really hard, and it still um, lands in the court and is obviously more difficult to return. Here's a video that I prepared to show you exactly what I mean there. Well, I hope that uh, helped explain it. Uh, there's no VCAR um, question that I can show you on this, but in 2018, our chief assessor uh, put out a sample paper, and there is um, there is her question. See how you go. I'll give you an opportunity to read it now. So let's unpack this. A young softball player pitching the ball well above the batter's head. I need to use my understanding of projectile motion. Um, to provide feedback and assist the player to pitch in the strike zone. So knowing that it's projectile motion, uh, I know that I must talk about the three factors affecting projectile motion. That is, I have to talk about um, 
the angle, height, and speed of release. I see it's a six mark question. I'm going to assume that there's three marks just for showing my understanding of those three concepts and then another three marks when I explain using the example that they've given me. So I would suggest that the young softball player needs to change their angle of release. Their angle of release currently um, is, is too high. Uh, so by lowering their angle of release, uh, rem keeping their speed of release the same because we want the uh, the ball to be pitched fast so that we can strike the batter out. Having said that, a coach might say, look, just slow it down slightly. Uh, and then finally, height of release, which in you know, an underarm softball throw is relatively fixed. But if I bend the knees, then I may be able to lower that height of release as well. And if I can get the pitcher to do that, then I think he's got a much, he or she has got a much better chance of getting the ball into the strike zone. There is uh, an exemplar that I prepared earlier. How did you go? Well, I hope you went well. Um, my name is Paul Stockdale. Thank you very much for watching ABC PE again. And remember that if you need more resources, uh, any information on tutoring or revision seminars, please visit our website at www.abcpe.com.au. See you next time.